Okay, so here we go. Let's talk about 48 volt, 12 volt, and 24 volt systems. I live off grid and I have for 10 years. I'm going on my third battery bank. Now my testing shows that in my 48 volt system, I've got Surrett Rolls flooded lead acid batteries. These are probably the top of the line off-grid flooded lead acid battery you can buy in the market today, but they're very expensive. So, where I have to replace them, that's what brings me into this DIY power wall. Thinking that way, where I've got a 48 volt system, I thought I'd build another 48 volt system, but a few things in my testing changed my mind. Okay, one of them is, we'll start with this. I have 16 flooded Surrett Rolls S460 batteries. Eight in this string, eight in this string for a total of 16 batteries and two strings, string one and string two. These batteries require maintenance. Now, the maintenance on them is top them, top them up with distilled water. If they go below the plate level, which is about an inch below the top of the water, then the air will damage the plates and then you have a lower valued battery. It won't do its uh, job it's designed for, so you don't let the water level go down on them, thus maintenance. In my testing, this 8 battery string for a 48 volt system has a connector from battery number 8 and battery number 1 that goes to the inverter and they feed the power from this string into the inverter and this string does the same thing obviously. Now both these strings uh, draw from battery 1 and battery 8. When I've done the maintenance and checked and did my water top ups, battery 8 and battery 1 in both strings absorbed twice as much water for the maintenance. So battery 2 to 6 in between didn't take that much water, but batteries 1 and batteries 8 took double the water 2 to 6's did. With that said, we know there's strain on batteries 8 and batteries 1. That's on a 48 volt system. Now that I have to change my battery bank out for a third battery bank, as I've been again off grid for 10 years, this brings me to this conclusion. Now, on a 48 volt power wall, I would build 80 packs cells in 14 packs. That's 1120 batteries. With that said, you've got 14 packs. So pack 1 will connect to the inverter and pack 14 will connect to the inverter and 2 to 13 will just be kind of floating along there compensating for the loss on the draw. With that said, You've got one line on 14 batteries, two lines, one for positive, one for negative. I don't, I find there's too much stress on pack 14 and pack 1 with that thought, with the theory of my other batteries, uh, knowing that they've taken all of the abuse on pack 1 and pack 8. So they're like a car tire, let's look at it that way. If we take pack 8 out and we put it in the middle, and we take pack 1 out and we put it in the middle, then we take the two middle packs and we put them on the ends and reconnect them. Top them up with water, we move along. That way you would have a more longevity life out of these batteries. They're like a car tire, so look at it that way. If you take the front tires off your car and you put them on the back and you put the back on the front, you get the full life out of the four tires. If you don't do it that way and you leave the front tires on and they go bad, the back tires are still good. That's the problem. So with that said, that's the 48 volt system, 16 batteries eight in each string. But there ain't eight in each string here. There's 14. So 14 batteries in a string for a 48 volt system power wall. There's 14 80 packs for 1120 batteries. The strain's going to be on pack one and pack 14. Okay. And there's going to be a lot of heat in the, involved. So what I've done is this is the everyday build for the 80 packs. And it's a fabulous job guys. Great testing. I've watched all your videos. YouTube is a wealth of knowledge. Great job. No discriminating here. However, with these packs, there's uh, a lot of things out there called longmans and uh, battery management systems and things as such that are going to require these battery packs to be balanced. And one of the biggest problems is if you're going with a 48 volt and you've got 1 and 14 tied into your power and 2 to 13 is not tied in, well they are, but the first power to hit and the first of the charge to take back is going to be on pack 1 and pack 14, which is going to strain them, it's going to stress them. I'll guarantee you them are the packs that are going to go first. But 
here's the normal 80 pack cell with them being four wide and 20 long look at it as being on an island okay so if you live in the middle of the island which is here and you want to leave the island and there's a road at each end there's the only way in and out is on both ends you've got to go half the pack to get out now the, the ones that are the front runners on the front they're out instantly they're gone the powers move through them before it even hits these but the bus bars people are thinking that are going to allow this to be a, a more balanced system yes i get that and the problem is this length can be shortened by building the same pack this big. So it's half as long as you can see. And if you live in the middle of this island, you've got half the distance of the island to travel either way. So by building your blocks in a square theory, if you've got half the distance to go to get out, you've just eliminated the other half. So my point being made here is that should eliminate some heat. So if you build your packs in a more square theory, it's going to be a better balance system and it's going to be less heat because there's more distance to travel. If you live on this island and you've got to get off and there's only two ends to get off and on from, you've got to go, if you live in the middle, half the length of the island, whether you go this way or whether you go this way. So if you eliminate the island to be half as long and twice as high, well, then you got more of a square, and it's got half the distance again to go from what the other one does. So with that said, it makes more sense to me to build the 80 pack cells in a square form. Back to this. With that said, that should eliminate heat and a better balance. So you got the 48 volt, 1 to 14, string 1, string 14. They're both full power. 2 to 13 are sitting there. They're going to pick up the pace for the power going out of these 1 and 14. So if they balance that out, the better plan is where these are going to get strained 14 and 1. They're going to get strained anyways, but at least with a 24 volt system, you can go with the same 14 packs. 1 to 7 is string 1 for a 24 volt and 8 to 14 is string 2. So now you have the same kilowatts, uh, 10 kilowatt system as the 48 volt, but you got a string from 1 and 7 to the inverter and you got a string from 8 and 14 to the inverter therefore that should reduce heat as well as longevity so in my case I'm going to build not just one 10 kilowatt system two so I'll have a 20 kilowatt system one here one here both consist of 80 cell packs uh, seven packs per string so there's two strings here. There will be two here for a total of four strings. That will give me a total of 2,240 batteries. And that would be a 20 kilowatt system. With that said, I recommend, if you're going to build a DIY power wall like I am, and all the information's out there on YouTube, good job, guys, hats off. My opinion is simply this. Building your packs in the square form is better for a balanced system, less heat, less distance to travel. Uh, making for a better balance system and when you have lead 1 and 8 and 7 and 14 on a 24 volt system with the same 10 kilowatt setup with the two leads it don't just put the strain on battery pack 1 and 14 like a 48 volt system would it puts a uh, strain on 1, 8, 7 and 14 so now four packs are strained instead of two that's the best information I can give you because back to the theory of the battery bank I need to replace it's wore out in the end batteries wear out well at least with a string of these you can disconnect one if you had to take a pack out in my case there would be uh, 1 to 28 and you can just disconnect that pack and you can run on the other three packs and then service it in my case I'm going to have an extra pack on the side that's going to be charged and then I'll put it in and circulate it however the decision to leave 48 volt is based on this theory. Four leads on 14 packs opposed to two leads on 14 packs from a 48 volt system. If you're going to build one DIY power wall, my recommendation is a 24 volt system and build your power pack square. If you do that, you should end up with less heat, more of a balance. In my system, I'm not putting in longmans, I'm not putting in a, a battery management system, but 
follow up I'll have more videos to come as to my progression with this right now I have enough just short of to build my uh, initial 10 kilowatt system and once it's complete and it's uh, circulated then well I'll have another video to follow up on from there but simply put 24 volt system with seven packs per string as many as you want to put in considering five kilowatts is the seven string theory relativity anyways for depending on what your batteries are but my recommendation is a 24 volt system for these reasons and I hope this helps and basically uh, well I don't want to create any turmoil out there guys but in relativity I live off grid and have for 10 years and if I have these batteries and they were in 24 volt then I would have four in a string and instead of having two and two that are taking strain and, and taking a lot of water of them batteries on a 24 volt system I wouldn't have had four I would have had eight then the eight would have been a more balanced of a system and there would have been less water needed well that's my theory and in it I believe the best possible road is a 24 volt system for your power wall seven packs in a string pack one pack seven they're gonna be your leads and at least doing that you have a better chance of strain on these batteries and maybe long longer life and with these packs would be a better balance and less heat so keep that in mind that's all I got just wanted to make a point of that and uh, good job out there youtubers I've watched all your videos absolutely uh, amazing I can't uh, credit is enough because uh, without your videos I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now I would have ended up buying another string of uh, batteries for six grand trying to save that money and circulate it into this and hopefully uh, get good results. We'll see where we go and uh, we'll update you as we know more. Have a good day YouTube and that's all.